Okay, if this is going to end with him, it should probably end with him leaving the screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's, that's uh, what I'm going to do. Right. Well, oh, I didn't even notice this skull the first time. Yeah, cause, um, so what I, what I, my intention was, like, he's going to walk up to the club mm -hmm. and then kick it. Kick it in the head. Mm -hmm. And then continue walking. Okay, so that's going to be happening... That's, yeah, around that's here. I, that's what I wanted, but it's 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 been. I think I, I would have to I would have to take out the the Jewish wall cycle. Well, and what you would do is here. Let's pretend it's here. This is why I'm glad we're here. Uh, so your guy is do 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 do. Walking. Okay, so we're here, right? Yeah. And we know this is where we want to stop. So as I showed you, if I hit U, I'm going to go back to the beginning, hit the U key. So we added 100 here, and they're both 100. But here's where we want to stop, so I'm going to set this to zero. So he stops there, okay? And we'll go see if he stops there. Uh... Right here? Yeah. Okay. So, if we're here. Nope, oh, let's drop it down. He walks. Oh, let's see the background keeps moving. Yeah, because um, so, I, I have a, mm -hmm. a camera on, on the... I do the, the parallax. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so I have a, a camera um, stuck in the... This one? It's on... Yeah, it's right there. So, if we, okay, that's your camera position. So, if I do, I'm just playing around here. Toggle hold. We're going to see if this works, okay? Yeah. Save as. Okay. And I realize I should have been talking more into the microphone. So, in the camera pre-comp, I added a toggle hold keyframe. So that's going to make it stop here until the... Oh, it's still moving. Let me hit you. Okay, yeah, good, good catch. Toggle hold. So it's going to hold until the next keyframe and jump. But we can always start off by adding extra keyframes after that. So I'm going to go back to... Here we go. Now see what we've got. So we did toggle hold there. Yeah. So we've got the skeleton walking. Comes to a stop. It's a little bit of a jittery stop, but that's fine. And let's see if there's keyframes on the skeleton. It's, uh... Yeah, okay, that's what's happening. So there's a position keyframe. So what I'm going to do is right here where the foot stops. I'm going to add a toggle hold here, and we'll go see if that stops that slide. So I'm going to hit play. That's a little better. And now from here, if you want him to kick the skull, is the skull part of the background? No, the skull is in, yes, in a um, grand, grand Okay. Yeah. Okay. There it is right there. Okay. So I'm going to hit P, hold down Shift and R so I've got position and rotation. Our skeleton is right here. So we're all framed up good. <clears throat> is this the left foot? Let's see if I do R for rotation. Okay, that's rotation. Let's do P for position. Like that. So we can kick it. And it'd look even better if... Okay, so this is 9723-9012. So that's 972.3. Nine oh one point two. We're gonna hold on to that, okay? Normally, there's a way to zero these out. 
when you're building your character. It's in one of the uh, tutorials I showed you. So that helps you find the resting pose faster when you zero it out. All right, so if we... He's walking up until about here. So right here, before he stops walking, as the leg's going back. So do that. So if that's the foot, there should be something for the leg as well. Yeah, it's um, in... Uh... If you click on the foot, it should bring it up in, uh, mm -hmm. it's in the keyframe. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the controller and the foot, if you open the keyframe, you'll see it. So, so I'm here by the foot. Is there another one? Yeah, if you uh, hit uh, W, U. Okay, one second. Yeah, so the only keyframe there is the one I have because of the walk cycle. So let's check out the calf. Oh, Nothing. I think it's in the walk cycle. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to put something in with the calf and the thigh. And we're not going to be, let's see what happens if I rotate the thigh. Nope. All right. Another calf. Let's see. What happens if I rotate the calf? Okay, yeah, so it's just going to be the position of the foot. So if we got here, we go a few frames back, and we move the foot backwards without overextending the bones, and then go a few frames forward. And then we'll go back to our resting pose. I just realized I didn't even need to uh, write those numbers down. You know what I mean? And then we could start the walk cycle again there. Um, so if we go back to title, is this it? No, it's not there. It's background. So we'll, here it is, right here. Yeah. All right. So here's the skull. All right. Great. So we got to walk back to here. Hello. Good evening. How are you tonight? Hey, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Okay, so we're going to, we're just doing Duick right now. So I've got a work, I've got a, a playlist on Duick that you could check out in your free time that I emailed everybody. Okay, so here comes the leg back, right? Here's the impact right there. So we go one frame, there's the impact. So. That's the skull, so it's going to be position, and we can do rotation as well. So, I'll go forward a couple frames, and let's move it up, over, there we could rotate it. So in between these two, I'm going to move it up so we can get an arc. Why are we not seeing a motion path here? There we go, see? So let's go back to here. And then you could adjust your keyframes as you see fit. See? Like that. So now he's kicking it. And once it starts moving, we can go back to our skeleton. Here we go, and this is the walk cycle. And we
we could change this a few frames. One, two, three, four, five. Sets it back up to 100%. Oops. Now it's tested out. Where'd the skeleton go? Oh, I'm in the wrong. There we go. Okay. So there's our walk cycle. He stops, winds up, kicks. Up. Oh, see, that's what why we test it. So we're gonna go back. There's the kick. So right as he's about to start walking again, that's where we gotta start our motion again. Um right here. This is where it's gonna start. So it was here and here. Now let's see if that starts the camera moving again. Where'd the desert go? Why? In the, oh, because this is soloed. There we go. That's what we did. So that's soloed. Then the camera should start moving again right there, see? So your toggle hold keeps the camera from moving until the next set of keyframes. So now we just gotta check the timing of your animation, and that should... Walking comes to a stop. Background comes to a stop. Wind up, kick. Now we just got to fix that background. Maybe it should start here. You see something goofy happen there. Oh, you know what? Maybe we didn't do the point of interest. We did the point of interest. So why is that doing that? Yeah, yeah. But your your background is distorting. It's... Let's see. So... I'm going to add back in the numbers. So let's look here. You got a zero. So this is your side to side. These are your ups and downs. So it's going 5326. 5326. This changed right here. That should be 5326. The numbers moved. And that should be 0, 0. So right here, that's what caused that. See? And then let's check your bottom row. Always look at the numbers. 534. 534. And then 14933. Uh, so this one changed. So it should be 534, I believe. You have 534. Copy that. That's what was causing that. And that was because we did that um, toggle hold. It added some goofiness to it. It's still doing it for some odd reason. Really, um, that's just the pre for the button. Okay. And so what we can do is let's zoom in here. Let's turn these to linear. So I just right click to get here.
So that may help us. There's still doing that. It's your point of interest. Your point of interest is moving along the z-axis. Can I separate these dimensions? No, I cannot. All right. Well, you'll have to figure out where in between here it's changing that second value. Uh, so if it's here, 5326. I'm going to try and force it there. It's also happening down here, too. Five, three, four. Let's paste that in there. I don't see the background. Okay, now the background's moving again. But they didn't start when we wanted it to. Which is what I don't understand. Let's try and move this to here. Get rid of these, and then see what happens. Yeah, now it's moving sooner. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so it's less for you to have to finesse now. And then there's a jump we have to figure out. No, there, there should be a position on the Okay. That's what's doing that. Okay. So if he's here. Let me see something real quick. What would happen if instead of going off the screen, he just crumbled into a heap? That's another possibility. So you could, you know, keep moving with your position so he goes off the screen by the time. Another thing is. Okay, so this is moving at his pace. And then, yeah, you'd have to continue the walk cycle and have him move off there. At least we came up with all these fixes so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like half the battle. Because I was working on this um, step by step just to get the motion. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks great. That looks fantastic. That's really nice. Well, One thing that may help you is what if he starts, him and the skull start more towards the middle? So that at the end, he doesn't have to cross the full screen. But, you know, that's not an issue. You know, it's like, we just got to have him finish when, off the walk. When I was, uh, um, so the main thing was to use the, the keyframe hold mm -hmm. to stop the camera. Well, we, we, I went back in. So first, we did toggle hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, yeah, toggle hold. But then, there were some issues with the background. So instead... I put in, I changed them to, um, 
linear so that, you know, it stops when it needs to, and then continues moving again. So you could do any method you want to do that, like I just showed you. Do you have any more questions on this? Okay, it's looking nice. Uh, you know what, actually, wait a second, while we're here, let's open that back up in a second. I can close this. And it was here. Yeah, it's because it's the one I added my initials yeah. to. Yeah. So let's push this a second. Let's go to your background. This is it, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's the skull, there's the sun, yeah, yeah. there's the sand, the dunes, blah, blah, blah. Here's the sky. Okay. So this looks like it's midday. So I'm going to add a solid. I'll put it above the sky. You'll see what's going on here in a second. Instead of... No, we're not even going to need to do that. That might look neat, but what we're going to do is... Oh, it's a solid I added. Okay. I'm sitting here thinking I added a shape layer. I'm going to add a gradient to it. Okay. And... That's a gradient wipe. Did not mean to do that. I'll do a gradient ramp. So I put a gradient ramp on there. Okay. And you can adjust it as you want. Um, like that. So check this out. If I change my blend mode on it to luminosity, Now you've got a little bit of tone to the sky. Like such, just add a little bit more when the skeleton comes in. Come on. Am I on the right? Here we go. Yeah. It'll help the skeleton stand out even more with the tone. So that's just a little something I wanted to show you. Because we we're talking about blending modes and layer styles and all that stuff. So, you know, I just put that right there. You could always get rid of it. I was just showing you a quick way to add a little bit of tone. All right. So I'll put this in your Google Drive. Very nice. I, I love that thing you showed me with this, the soccer. That was really good. Great job on that. So you animated that part. Yeah. Like you just use something for reference. Like you watch yeah. someone kicking. Yeah, that's a smart way of doing it. Looks it looks phenomenal. That should be in your senior show. <laughs> All right, great job. Anyone else have something for me to help out with? And all this is recorded, so we'll be able to uh, access it tomorrow. Actually, tonight. I'm just going to put it up unedited. Anyone else have anything for me to review? Yes, yes, one second. Oh, cool. That's a huge help. <laughs> it's You can find anything you're looking for online to help you learn. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you're doing a full character rig with realistic motion. And you're doing it well. So that's the important part. Taking the time to do it right is what's going to be worth it. 
you can rush through it and have it not look good, or you could do it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're going to sit down and do it, may as well do it right. And yours looks phenomenal. So hats off to you. Okay, so it looks like there's a texture I'm missing. Do you know which one it is? Oh, it's in here it's called texture. Okay, so it's finding the wrong art file. Okay, like right here, texture. So if I have this selected, and I've also got selected in my project panel. So selecting the timeline, selecting the project panel. Then you... No. Good question, Dino. You don't have to push anything. You just click once here, and then click once here. Then you hold down Alt or Option as you drag it onto that light. It replaces it. So this is selected, that's selected. I hold down Alt or the Option key, drag it on. It's going to keep all your keyframes, all your effects, all your speed graph. It's just how you swap out artwork. One is here. Man 2, we don't need. So let's drop down the res. Okay, what if this arm does not fade off? So we got that. And instead, here's what we're going to do. This is just some spit on with motion. So like I said, I haven't seen this until now. All right, so everything below here is part of your image, right? I mean, the background. Yeah. Okay, so if we go here. All right, now, let's take a look at this at full res real quick. If I were to hit P for position, So that's the last frame. So I'll go one frame, two frame, three frame. All right, so here. One, two, three. Add a keyframe. So we got this quick snap. And so if we're here, and the text is going to be down below, so what happens if we lower it, because the recoil, like that, you could probably even come back more, it's about there, you can add a flash to it as well, let's move back a little bit more, and then the type can come in a little bit smaller. And then we could rotate it down. So it's like, here's the snap. There, go forward a few frames. And do, 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 add a motion blur. Maybe there could be a strobe there or something like that. That helps bring the type in a little better, too. Sound effect would help, too.
we'll go one frame here. Here, I'm going to try and add a layer above it. And we'll see what happens if I throw flash on there. I've not used this. Oh, it's a text one. All right, so we're not going to do that. Generate. Strobe light. Let's lower that strobe duration. Nope, okay, so strobe's not gonna work. Let's try if we make this white. that I'm gonna hide it so just it there is where we're gonna see it T for transparency go one frame forward zero two frames the one frame zero change the blending mode let's try add Let's put it underneath the arm. See something like that. Adds a little bit. Like, what do you think? Yeah, because think of it this way. Realistically, the arm's not going to fade away. So your choices are you could camera zoom into the arm into the next scene, or what we did here was do the recoil plus a flash and rotate the arm off because it rotates on. Then it just goes back like there is recoil. Yeah. And you got the light, which would be from the muzzle. And what might help everything here? A little bit of smoke after that flash because there's always smoke after firing a firearm. Okay. Light and smoke. You could even find a little video clip of smoke and just like subtly layer it over. I mean, there might even be a smoke in here. Let's see. Or fog. Something like that. Yeah, see, there's fog. Um, one second. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time. No, let's go. Yeah, duplicate it. Put it above uh, you. Let's delete all those. Put this here. Let's try fog lights. What's fog lights? Got? So that's fog lights. So that's not half bad. Um, let's make this black. Then try fog lights and then a blending mode. I guess it. Oh, that's already set to add. Okay. There we go. So we'll do screen to get rid of the black.
drop down our right here where the flash is. We'll use that to trim the layer. And we'll take a look at that at full res. That extra little bit adds to the texturing. And I could also try and put it sitting below your effects. But then they might actually cover it, I think. And I could also bring down the opacity, make it a little bit more subtle. Is that effect? Yeah, so this is going to be a fast effect. So if I hit U, I'm going to slow it down by moving these further away. And I'll move these further away as well. See, now you got something slower. That's half the battle right there. Overlay shows it off nice, too. Let's so see what this looks like at full res with these little tweaks. Might even be fast. I quality. I'm sure that's fine. So I just want to add composition and Q. This was quick, named it. I just, gonna, I just hit render. See the extra bit of life the fog lights add? Yeah. One thing that might be nice, added touch. And we'll want to guess what I'm going to do. When possible, look for play, because motion design is graphic design adding time and space. Second I saw this, the first thing that popped into my head, get rid of the O and do a bullet hole. You know what I mean? And blend that into the scene. You can try different ones. There we go. That might be fun. I'll send you all oh, this can't be downloaded securely. What? Really? We'll try a blending mode on it. Okay, so... Let's find our type.
U. Here's the keyframes. Bring that back to roughly about where it was. And here's the bullet hole, put it over top of it, line it up, and then I'm going to parent it to the text so it moves perfectly with it. Anything that is pure white, we can get rid of with, I think, a screen or multiply. Let's try multiply. It was multiply. All right, that's positioned. Now, if I parent it to here, and I believe it should also follow the opacity right out. So we're going to have to move that as that tracks. Hmm? Well, I I think this is, I'm looking at the negative space and saying, you know, Let's drop down that res. Watch that again. Oh, so. I'll need to. Good evening. There we go. Like that. But you know what? Instead of opacity, that's boring. It's not what we're here for. Scale. Go forward. I uh, go back a few frames. Glass cracks doesn't fade on. See? It's just thinking about things and how they occur in nature gives it more impact. We could probably even shorten that. See? It's just like you and your soccer player. You found the reference. I'll move that even closer together. Yep. Like such. So does that help give you some ideas, Shane? Yeah, All right, so. Uh, okay, so you got your setup. You know, you've got that. You got your text. You just, uh, oops. Come on. That zoom thing is going to be the end of me. There we go. All right. And since we added the fog lights, 
you've got that subtle motion that keeps happening after your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you could have the I Dare You come in even later with your animation hierarchy to about there. Like such. So I'm going to close. It's looking very nice. I like the texture. I like the color. I like the palette, the theme. You know, maybe a sound effect might help of, you know, a fire being discharged or glass shattering. Or, so, nice work. All right. Anyone else have anything? Let me double check. Okay, so, if your file is huge and you don't feel like uploading the huge thing, or, you know, you just want to learn how to do this, because it's good to know for your clients, once Media Encoder is open, click the plus right here by Q. Then we open up your MOV file. So we got the MOV, we selected it. Wait for that to load up. All right. And, you know, from your drop down arrow, you want H264 if it's not already loaded up. High bit rate is good. Then you click here to name it and say where it's going. And I'm not going to change the file name. It's going where I want it to because the MP4 will give it a different file. And then you click the green triangle up here to start your render. The little green play button. And since, since this was already rendered, the compression of it should not take that long. And I sat through a very long run with all these particles and everything happening. So that was all you had to do to compress it. And that took all of like a couple minutes. So we'll watch the rendered MP4. I really, really made it so I could see what it was doing. Right, right, right. I like the overshoot you did there. You. Watching it at full speed, you could probably, if you wanted to, speed up those particles. And what I mean by that is everything else looks great. Uh, so if we go here, I guess it's this one. Yeah, just that file. Yeah, whatever keyframes you used for those, just move them closer together uh, for the birth of them. And we might even be able to get away with... Uh, I'll show you a witch I'm call it. Um come on. You go drop that res way down. Okay, here we go. Now it's gotta find your particle layer. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking great. Uh dun dun bum bum bum. It's scene one, I know that. It's the music box. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. All right. So, and I think it's in here. Yeah. It's not that. It's in here. I know it's in here. Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm a yo-yo. So, I went to window. Effects controls was turned off. It's the bottom line. Now effects controls is here. There's your particle world. Okay, so I'm going to hit you. All right, now, let's go down to extras. Hold particle release. 
The particles start right about here. So I'm going to go to one frame before they start. Go forward. Set that to 100. And what else? Was that? That was it, and then it's opacity. So hopefully that helps um, the particles burst out faster. Does that look a little faster to you? Maybe. That seems faster. Let's find out. That's close to about the same amount of time. So. And you didn't keyframe the, oh, it's the birth and the death time. Okay. So. We could probably check the velocity. So if you got minus 12, let's increase that a little bit. Current velocity, let's speed that up. Let's lower the resistance a little bit. That's a little bit. And then one other thing I was looking at here. Uh, Okay, watch the ground it's on. Okay, so see how that keeps moving once that stops? Okay. I like the subtlety of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like what you did with the windows there. Yeah, that overshoot's great. Looking really good. One thing I can't figure out is why is there four keyframes for the, um, The particles, there should be two. Unless they fade off. Wait, so you're going 83 to 100. 83 to 100. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right, very nice job. Do you have any questions or... I can't think of anything. I muted it. I muted it. So I could hear you talking. Oh, 
yeah, I can't think of anything like uh so I don't want to give any suggestions that would you know trip you at the finish line, you know like if if I had time, what I would do is here the cut from here to the next scene I'd have it start in there and pull out almost like a a reverse fly through so that you're coming out of the top of the music box from this scene. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't want to give you any ideas that would take you too long to uh, execute. You know what I mean? Like, you would see that reflection in here, and everything would push back. So you'd end up here, but you'd be more closed in on the top of the lid. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be really cool. But that would... Yeah, like I said, that's, that's just you were saying. That's just me giving you your tuition's worth, you know? <laughs> Saying, like, that's why I prefaced it with, if I had time, you know, because, like I said, you rarely ever have time in the business world. Like, most of the motion graphics I execute, I have to have completed from concept to completion in about two hours. Exactly. That's why I'm showing you these fast ways to work so that you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs, you know, saying, I don't know how to do this. Because you will be able to do it. You just think about what you want to do, figure out how you're going to get there, and then think about where the anchor point needs to be, position, scale, rotation, opacity, your information hierarchy, your animation hierarchy. Do you need mats? Do you need masks? You know, do you need particles? That type of thing. Should you parent things together? Will pre-composing make this faster? Expressions. That's why I've covered all these things throughout the semester, so you've got more tools in your your toolbox. Yeah, definitely very <laughs> I'm glad. That's what I strive for. And you've all got the lectures on video to go back to whenever you need to. That's why I do it this way. It's, it's like when you learn to dance or a martial art. It's muscle memory. You learn a whole bunch of stuff and your body just absorbs it and then you keep practicing it until it becomes muscle memory. All right. Fantastic job. Anyone else have anything to show me? Here we go. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Like, okay, all right, all right, all right. I see what you're saying. I think they went in doubt. Um, just throw them in and... What's it in the end? Yeah. Yeah. So is this, like, music copyright free? And royalty free? Um, I got it from uh, Pixabay. Oh, Pixabay? Yeah. Uh, I don't trust Pixabay. Um, yeah, yeah they, they, they are. But anybody can take anything they want and put it on Pixabay. Whereas, like, they say it's not royalty free. I mean, but, like, the only guarantee is, like I said, getting it off YouTube, but you could see what happens. What I would do, I would post it on Facebook and Instagram and see if you get flagged. Because if you get flagged, it's copyrighted. You know what I mean? That's my test. Facebook and Instagram will, will flag you if you've got any copyrighted audio in a post. YouTube might not catch it. But those two, they will catch it. Even if you've got two seconds of a song, they'll catch it. So give that a shot. And if it works, it works. So that, that's, that's all I can tell you. I mean, you could even just post the song and like type in the word test or take a photo and put the song with it. You know what I mean? That's, that's the fast way of finding out. Thursday for the crit, it will be virtual only. There's no need for anyone to come to the campus that night, especially if you're going to be up here during the morning for the senior show. So, again, virtual only. I'll text everybody for that. We'll do the crit through Zoom. No, no one's going to be up here at night, right? If you come up for the senior show. Okay, so do you want to be in person if you're going to be here? It's up to you. I'm probably, I'm probably not going to be there until 5. 
as well. Uh, it, I'm probably going to be out there too. Okay, and uh, Sarah, you were saying what? I was just saying that I will personally be there later. Like, I will be there in the morning. Okay, all right, all right. So you will not be here later. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay, yeah, so then that, that makes the most sense to just do it virtually then. Because it's silly for everyone to drive up in the morning if they're going to the show and then be stuck up here or go home, then have to drive back up. All right, great. So it'll be virtual Thursday. And the show starts at 11, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, okay I'll try and be there around 11. Check out everybody's work. Okay, well, congratulations. I'll see who I see at the show Thursday and then virtual only for the crit at 6. Have All right, cool. No, no. Oh, I was just telling Dino this. It has to be submitted to me by 5.30 p.m. Thursday night. Okay. So 30 minutes before the crit, okay? You. Yeah, so you got until 5.30 p.m. that Thursday, and then I'm going to download everything and get it ready for the uh, Zoom call. Okay? So you can then the final file with an MP. Three, right? Final file will be an MP4, MP4 or MOV. Like if you only have time to do what I did tonight in After Effects, where it's like, you know, composition, add to render queue, quick time, that's fine. You can submit an MOV. No one's going to be upset by that. That's why I'm saying if you submit an MOV, I'll have time to convert it to an MP4 for the presentation. It'll just play faster and things will run smoother. Okay. All right. Spectacular. See everybody Thursday then. Okay, thank you. Yep. No problem. Have a great night. Have a great night.